so yeah there are certain factors which children do face and again like i said many a times they are overlooked by them saying that okay um, i might not be able to help myself and they get into a shell or there might be factors which they actually get affected with and they might get into shells or they over portray themselves to be extra strong so factors could be something as body image factors could be like you know peer pressure it could be media influence it could be bullying it could be cultural um, and you know authentic identity to be formed it could be gender identity it could be parental influence and um, it could be as simple as like i just shared comparison Jitendra Singh, banker turned entrepreneur and author of the book Perfect Mastering the Art of Selling. I welcome you to read my story where I interview authors, speakers, coaches, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and more. Today I have with me Miss Nandini Khanna. She is an accomplished professional and entrepreneur with nearly two decades of diverse experience. Her expertise spans image consulting, soft skill training, communication, styling, etiquette, coaching, and personal branding. She has also excelled as an educator, preschool principal, and curriculum developer, assisting numerous preschools in their establishments. As an image and soft skill coach, her work centers on enhancing individuals' appearance, behavior, and communication, fostering the personal development. Her mission is to empower individuals and organizations to become smarter, sharper, and better version of themselves. Her programs equip individuals with practical skills, both strengthening their confidence and leadership abilities. Her extensive uh, repertoire includes personal branding workshops, image management workshops, and corporates, image makeovers for individuals, and soft skill training in areas such as communication skills. business etiquette leadership team building and much more her clients encompass a wide spectrum from corporate giants like aoi and citizens especially the hospitals to education institutes such as tirthakar mahavir university and janki devi memorial college her professional journey is adorned with accolades including impa leadership award for social impact recognition as impa certified member and certifications from image consulting businesses institute from usa among other countries so today she will be discussing with us about her life journey so let us hear from her welcome nandini ma'am the platform is open and now over to you Jitendraji, I think that was really a long introduction. Phew! <laughs> I thought maybe you cut, cut, copy, paste. But yes, that is very, very true. Um, to start with introductions, I think speaks volumes about you. So uh, that's what we try and inculcate into a person from inside out. and uh, that is what image consulting you know soft skills is all about to know the person uh, authentically from inside and it should actually naturally in a beautiful way come out outside right rightly said so first thing ma'am i'd like to ask you is like how did your past life has affected the person you actually wanted to be in your life and what you are wow you know it's easily said that uh, oh time heals but honestly yes time heals but somewhere time also makes you realize that uh, maybe that would have not been the right take or maybe i could have done better or even at times uh, one feels that uh, dude i was not so bad at that time right so that's what i think our past in particular hold so for me in particular a uh, past would be i was a very big introvert and you know it's very difficult for people to realize and relate to that you nandini were an introvert and i'm saying it out loud first time here because i relate to so many people shying away from small small things when they have it in them and it was just an awakening one day and i said enough you know of being 
into my own shell what next is that's when actually i realized that that what next has stayed with me very very constantly and strongly from my past till now and uh, it was just a self awakening jitender that it uh, helped me realize that what do i do next to build up for my own self so it's not about people it's about you and that awakening somehow has to come within you of course uh, in today's day and age we have a lot of people who help you out um you know to build up for me i took uh, the way of you know starting to go into the gym feeling better uh, i lost a lot of weight then and uh, i started networking in a way i started making a lot of friends so that was my way of you know giving myself that positive thought and encouragement and this is way back in college days i'm talking about and uh, that's how i relate my past to that if i could do it then i can even do it now so like i said that what next has stayed with me very very constantly and i truly believe um, that learning is an ongoing process and uh, that's how i moved on to different fields of work now and then and um, been into education ever since so it's been over 14 years i've been in the field of education and even now being an image consultant and a soft skills trainer i still feel this is education right so almost two decades of being into the field of education and there's been no looking back so yes past holds a very strong importance in my life because at what next is still imbibed in me very strongly and yes i believe in being that go getter jump in first and fir dekhte hota hai kya <laughs> right wonderfully explained yeah. so now if i ask Thank you like what are the things you are passionate about in your life and what is the role of motivation and inspiration on to it uh okay so what i'm passionate about is uh, because of certain experiences in life uh, i felt that uh, my passion now is to help people out and i'm not saying it as a cliche but honestly uh, because maybe i've been through certain situations in life certain experiences in life when i just shared with you in the previous question uh, that if i needed it and thankfully the awakening came to me myself maybe for others it might not be so easy you know maybe for others it doesn't come so as a thought process or they might just need a little bit of hand holding to believe in i had great parents who helped me you know there was a never or no for me and that was a big blessing till date so sometimes you might have those people or situations which help you and sometimes you might just be wanting to look for some and you still hold yourself back so that is my passion all about that i would uh, love to help individuals who i know have some spark inside them everybody has something special inside them and uh, to help them out is my uh, passion and what motivated me uh, i started working with preschool children when i was going through a personal turmoil and uh, When I started working with them I just realized there's no questioning there's no reasoning they're just so pure I mean they're just so full of life that purity comes from inside and that is what has motivated me till date I take that as the biggest blessing of working with little preschool children so that's where I say 14 years of education I have built up with them and grown in my life with those children so that's where my passion and motivation truly come from that's why really, and uh, you've been closely working on this for so long and and yeah. you are keeping your motivation and uh, like uh, inspiration alive with this which is really important and which is really a good thing otherwise what happens is we kind to uh, tend to like lose focus and we move on to other things so to be working constantly on one thing for so long we definitely need some motivation and inspiration and that too on regular basis yes so that came through with children you know some people just say ki are preschool ja ke bachcha kya karega you know but trust me uh, those are the most important crucial years for them and if you are in that field with them i think it's a blessing for any individual to be with children at that age. Right, yes. rightly said. So, ma'am, if I ask you, like uh, things related to your work and experience, how you started your career and what all you did so far? 
um okay so i think i had it inbuilt inside me uh, when i was just finishing college i always felt that i have this love for children so i'm going to my previous work experience and i honestly joined a preschool just like that and they were kind enough to give me place and let me come and experiment and work with children and within that that time i joined for free i told them i don't want any salary just let me explore because i was not teacher trained i had not done any qualification then but it was just the love for children which i had inside me and that's how i think i started my journey and eventually of course they loved me and i loved the working with children and uh, that's how my whole journey towards preschooling started my other uh, journey in life was uh, uh, love for life sorry was uh, baking and uh, i went to uh, le cordeble london and australia and i was very passionate about my patisserie skills and i have a diploma in that as well so i continued on that field for almost 5 to 6 years and then again i said what next and i said okay let's get qualified this time for working with children so i went on to getting qualified as a montessori uh, teacher so went back into preschooling and that's it i think that took the better half of me for many years and there was no looking back till covid happened and um, it was just one of those moments when i just felt stagnant and i said nandini you reached a certain mark you've challenged yourself till a certain level what next yet again happened <laughs> and uh, uh, i said yaar ye soft skills log bahut bolte rehte what is the soft skills all about so let's just uh, go through and that's when i saw icbi and again which is me i just jumped in without even knowing much and i came to know that we have image as well so i said okay Yeah, I'm ready to do both the courses and uh poof this is my new way of learning and evolving and uh, been a brilliant journey till now as well so i think that what next is always kept me motivated and uh, learning definitely is an ongoing process sometimes i feel oh god how much do more do i need to be studying which is not me but that's all right so it's a great great uh, thought process and experiences nice ma'am so now my question is again what next so what is the thing like you would like to do in your life what is your vision mission and goal in life for next 5 to 10 years from now i would to share it as a secret i'm very bad at goal setting per se and i really wish uh, there is someone who keeps me with up with the stick for that goal setting goal setting aspect i've been trying to do it since last one year but i'm a very easy going flowing person sometimes i feel it's a backlash also i'll be very honest so when you say 5 to 10 years yes i want to be uh, more established as an image consultant and a trainer uh, because theek uh, hai abhi i've actually ventured into many fields of this also like they say you find a niche i have still not pinpointed and worked on a particular particular niche because this field of work is also very vast when it's even image consulting or even soft skills however uh, now i feel yes i've got my little bit of answers on uh, what particular concepts or things i can more so work on yet be open at the back end to other kinds of work through this right so uh, my goal yes for another 5 to 10 years is to establish more strongly on certain niche niche aspects now and uh, yet be open to other fields of work as well right. uh, and maybe my one goal is which is kind of hidden you're getting all my secrets out huh? is uh, i might be wanting to do my own mother toddler parent toddler program which i feel is my forte I'm thing which I really really strongly believe in. So fingers crossed I'm just uh, hanging on to this part and maybe going to be merging both my strengths as an image consultant and preschool mentor to build up together both fields. Great ma'am. So now if I ask you like what are the important life lessons you have learned from your personal as well as professional journey? Hmm important life lessons. First one I would say Jitendra is that it's okay not to be okay you know even like when I shared my journey of being an introvert trust me it was not easy 
you know you you feel in a shell you see so many people out there you know being in the limelight uh, you see so many people with so many friends and you sometimes question yourself whether you're in school whether you're in college and even now for some adults you know you just sometimes wonder oh gosh i wish i was like that so one life lesson was it's not about them it's about you so like i said the awakening has to start from your own self and who can only help you that for that is you now what do i mean by help help is like when i realize okay maybe gymming and making friends is my first step that was my own personal example for some it might be a, let me just try and make two to three best friends let me start communicating with them for some even communication might be a very big you know boulder a barrier to them opening up to people and uh, so it's your own personal take your own personal thoughts how do you want to maneuver and take that help do you want someone as a coach do you need someone just to listen to you do you need to go out there and you know maybe lose weight to get you that confidence at that time today of course i it doesn't bother me maybe at that time yes it did many years ago you know so yeah different aspects of um, how you keep yourself motivated and going sorry i think i've lost the question can you just repeat the next part of it sure like uh, most important life lessons yeah so one was yes to recognize your own self and start moving towards it see we all take failure as such a big thing that oh my god what if i fail but that what if again if you don't try it how do you know you will be successful or you will fail and a beautiful uh, thought process to the word fail is first attempt in learning you know so that's something which stayed me with me yet again very very strongly that it is actually a first attempt in learning until we don't take that first step how are we going to be imagining ourselves climbing up that ladder i might sound cliche here with these kind of sentences but these are very very factual and you know you just need to sit down alone to realize what next can i do to help my own self nobody can force you nobody can make you do it today if i want to lose weight i go to a dietitian i go to the gym but till it doesn't hit me here that i have to actually make an effort it's not going to happen right so it's like anything else if i know i want to run a 100 meters race i know i have to get up i have to practice i have to you know exercise to make myself reach that level of even practicing and then move on to practicing so this is what it is rightly said so ma'am since you've been working on image you've been working on soft skills and you've yeah, been working yeah. with children for quite long so on to this like i would like to ask you the concept of image goes beyond physical appearance and can include self perception academic pressures and more so what are some common image related challenges children may face in various aspects of their lives and how can we empower them to build a healthy self image and resilience Okay that's a long question I'll answer it in parts so uh very rightly said you know um today is a world where uh, any kind of social media as a b you know i mean it's so easy to just reach out to things compare yourself to so many things or even the person right next to you and uh, when it comes to children in particular yes there is peer pressure we can't overlook it peer pressure as in you know oh, this child has got you know um, a new pencil box why can't i get it i'm giving you very simple examples to start with it starts at a very young age um so i have a nephew who's 5 years old and trust me that he came the other day and he just told me that nanni you know uh, that boy today was wearing a new apple watch a 5 year old okay it might not be real it might be real we don't know that's how children get you know that kind of pressure that oh why can't i have it if this person is having it so it starts at that young age um So yeah there are certain factors which children do face and again like i said many a times they're overlooked by them saying that okay um i might not be able to help myself and they get into a shell or there might be factors which they actually get affected with and they might get into shells or they over portray themselves to be extra strong so factors could be something as body image factors could be like 
you know peer pressure it could be media influence it could be bullying it could be cultural um, and you know authentic identity to be formed it could be gender identity it could be parental influence and um, it could be as simple as like i just shared comparison you know so uh, these are issues which we see in children in today's day and age now there's no particular age i would say bracket but um, i feel maybe when the child starts being in these kind of environments and they start realizing it that it is affecting them say maybe at the age of 9 years plus uh is when you you know you start realizing certain things about your own self in particular and move on to adolescence they somewhere stay with you right so um jitendra if you could just ask me the second part of the question again please when we uh, talk about children so they have uh, their mindset related to like uh, where and they feel these type of problems coming into their life so what are yes, some yes. common image related challenges they face and how to empower them to build a healthy self image and resilience okay so self related i've already answered like body image peer pressure etc right and how to impart is you know sometimes um, even parenting plays a major role here you know sometimes even having a best friend who in you know helps you get out of situation plays a role here so it's very personal in that way um, even we have counselors in school many children go to counselors to speak one on one which certain things they can't share with their parents or they can't share with their friends so yes there are many options children can you know uh, build up with relate to in today's age thankfully there are people around there are options around where you can have your one on one consultations and help and um, this is something which is again i would say very important to realize and not let it drain you down because some negative aspect if you've got inside you or some negative environment which was maybe as early as childhood somewhere stays with you trust me it stays for a lifetime till you don't address it so that addressing is very very important whether you are open as friends to your parents whether it could be your own uh, friends friends per se it could be a counselor at school it could be us i have had so many people who just come and they just want you to listen you know right. and i'm even talking about teenagers here at times they just don't get that opportunity that somebody can just sit there smile at them and just listen to them even that helps them in a very very positive mindset you know yes. and one request since we are going to be on uh, social uh, fronts as well to is to parents is to you know not only expect things you know there's a difference between quality time and quantity time you know so you don't have to give quantity all the time you need to give quality there's a very big difference between these two words so it's the quality which you need to be giving to your child especially in the younger years because that is what helps them build up into a better personality from inside i'm not talking about any outside aspect here that is what gives them the encouragement for life and trust me that stays in a very very strong way i spoke of introvertness though i was very well well looked after and uh, touchwood had a brilliant uh, upbringing however there might have been certain reasons which inculcated me towards building into an introvert right it can't just happen overnight nobody is born as one thought Right. there could be certain aspects which might might have stayed with me in childhood and lasted with me till maybe college years you know so yes to identify that as parents especially in the younger years to help your children out who fuel win uh, win win situation all throughout right so uh, since we are in digital world so in today's digital connected world children are constantly exposed to image of ideal beauty standards through media and social platforms so how do these external influences impact child self esteem and body image what can parents and caregivers do to mitigate these effects which are coming through social media 
you know um jinda it's not only about social media here i truly relate to your question but i think this starts from home it starts from the environment around us don't we see so many people saying oh you know um tu kali hai you know tu ye rang mat pehniyo ya tu moti hai you know you you can't afford to be wearing a sari right now till you don't lose weight or you know you are big built so you know you should be covering yourself to a certain level and so on and so forth for i'm talking more this was i think more a little girl related women related even for boys oh you're just so thin and skinny dude how can you be in the football team or you know you look like a girl you just so thin you just so skinny or you just so short so these images start not only from social media these images start from the kind of environment we've been in yet again as much as childhood very true and uh, wanting to be somebody else is where the seed of incultation happens and it builds up and that's when we start reaching out to social media imagining ourselves to be somebody else truly you know and uh, very rightly said how do we address this is again by creating that positive environment first from where you belong it could be your parents it could be your friends it could be your teachers it could be you know people around you in that whole environment which create that negativity and because of that negativity is when we start imagining to be somebody else and that's when the social media adds on to that thought process you know Perfect. it's nice to have an ideal i would never say okay if you look up to somebody but have that look up to somebody in a very very positive way have right. that body image have that person's perso- uh, you know personality their overall persona as a very very positive way now today if i look up to uh, amitabh bachchan ji there might be a reason i i i might not want to be at that level but for other reasons his body confidence the way he addresses people his control on his language which is english and hindi you know so yes you need to look out and see what is a positive aspect you're taking out of it it's not easy trying to be somebody else so don't try to be somebody else in fact take in that positivity of that somebody else saying that oh wow this person is so beautifully articulated in this way or this way or this way people right. have come up to me and said so many times anthony you know what the best part about you is that you're always smiling even if they don't know me personally and you just come across to be such a warm person without even hardly knowing that person or that conversation happening now what spoke here maybe it was my body language maybe it was just as simple as a smile so that is what needs to be identified and that is how one needs to be you know overcoming these aspects especially like you rightly said that imagination coming through from social media it's good to have somebody who you might look up to but like i said have it in a very positive way don't compare and don't try to be that person it never right. works so uh, we often hear about the uh, prevalence of body shaming and cyberbullying among young people so how can we address these image related issues and foster a more inclusive and accepting environment for children both online and offline so um see firstly yes is uh, this what would i say is this creating this awareness you know that uh, body shaming is no longer accepted and i think it did come up uh, in a very very big way in the last 2 to 3 years we've had a lot of people talking about body shaming we've had brilliant influencers now in today's day and age who have come across saying that i love my body you know and uh, body shaming is a total no no so yes in case you uh, think that somebody around you is facing that get them and build up towards that awareness show them certain things which are happening and tell them it's all right nobody is perfect you know it's okay not to be okay it's okay not to be perfect and uh, help them find that like i said the little spark everybody has a little something inside them help them talk towards that positiveness about them and that's how i would say as influencer as a group of people as parents as social media this is what needs to be addressed 
definitely and this is how one realizes that oh this person also was like this before how come she's changed or you know bring out those true stories about people Got you it. know everybody has a past like that's how we started everybody has a past but what you showing now is to bring out that past and show people that dude this is what i was but till that self realization till that self esteem till that self consciousness didn't hit me i would have been there but the day it hit me with whatever aspects of help strength positivity we built out and here i am today Perfect. you know so i would feel yes uh definitely help that person to identify what is that one thing which ha- will help them move up that ladder for sure right that is really important like uh, first thing you should be positive about whatever you are and how you feel that is really important if you feel yes. good about yourself definitely you can like be in any situation you can handle it very well so that is really important so even uh, sorry you said the word self esteem that's something like i have been saying it is something which needs to start building up from within yes it doesn't happen overnight these are things which you need to learn how to address and you need to learn how to move slowly towards them you have to be very very patient self confidence now somebody like i just said might not be feeling that they're good at communication so many people come up to me and they said nani ma'am we want to learn how to speak in english fluently now the speaking in english fluently might not come overnight right what do we need to do different. we need to exercise do exercises we need to practice we need to literally being sometimes tutoring your own self in whatever ways so same way self confidence self esteem are two very simple words but what is that which is going to help me achieve it what is that one step first to identify okay first step is this the second will be okay once i cross over this is what is the next step do i need an image make over do i need to be learning how to dress more appropriately as simple as do i need to even learn how to put makeup or for a guy how do i groom what is that shirt combination hum kehte hain interview skills preparation right. also many a times again very simple but what all goes into it from body language to communication skills to your non verbal skills to your dressing skills So this is exactly how one needs to learn how to build up on their own self confidence and uh, self esteem. Correct. It takes time. It required a systematic process. If you follow that Absolutely. with positivity, definitely whatever flaws you have related to your thoughts, your mindset, maybe your uh, like self image what you perceive it as to be and definitely you can work on it and you can make it better that's really wonderful ma'am uh, so if i ask you further like on uh, about you so what is your take on success what do you have thoughts about it or you have feeling for for success <laughs> uh i would say again such a lovely word to be used but uh, it takes time it's something where you really firstly need to understand what is success for you again i put that you in a prostrophe because success for you might not be success for somebody else or somebody else's success might not be success for you you know i would say it in the for me success is uh, at the present moment even if i can just bring that little bit of change in that person who's come to me with hope you know so that little bit of change could be even bringing a smile that little bit of change could even be like i just shared learning to speak fluent english even if the it happens to be those two sentences or as simple as which we say simple but it might not be for anybody is to introduce themselves so that's my present success factor is to bring in that little bit of change that person is looking at it might not be big but it might be at least a kick start towards their success journey and uh, success otherwise i would say it can never be a constant that's how i take you know for me when i was uh, in my preschool uh, years uh, of being a principal success for me maybe at one time was to get these many number of children in the school success could be to keep my teachers motivated success could be to have those parents compassionately and carefree we sending the children to school success could be having every child looking forward to coming to school 
you know so even there i would say my success parameters for my own self would be maybe even daily to monthly to yearly so success is something which i don't get bound by success for me honestly every day is even achieving that one little task like i said i'm very bad at goal setting so even achieving that little bit of task maybe for my own self or for somebody is a way a tick mark in a good successful thought day year months or minutes <laughs> right that's how said. i just success wonderful man so uh, Thank in you. last any message or advice you would like to share with our viewers and listeners um that learning is an ongoing process firstly you know and uh, ups and downs are a part and parcel i always take it as life is a roller coaster the moment you sit in it learn to enjoy it and TK even being an image consultant even being a people's person even being someone who helps people out even we have our own lows at times but it's like i said it's okay not to be okay you know you know if this phase has come the other phase will come through as well but the most important point i would like to say is think of it as a phase don't take it as a life changing situation you know stay grounded stay true to your own self let your authentic self come out to be the positive you in front of people it's okay to even have a negative aspect coming through but why nobody helps you till you don't want to help your own self yes there are many aspects and many kind of people like us like you who are bringing these things into light and are available to help people get this awareness so take that help there is no shame ever in taking any kind of help today if i know i might not be able to get out of a certain situation i reach out to my own mentors why not i reach out to maybe even a counselor if i need to get addressed on certain things or learn about certain things so there is no shame in asking because till you don't ask you don't get so identify what is holding you back identify is there something which is troubling you work towards it reach out for that help it never hurts that's all i would like to say to all our viewers really wonderful and what an amazing insights so it was really amazing to hear from you uh, and i was really enjoying the discussion the conversation <laughs> and uh, you thank you so about, much like image and uh, how we can make it better in terms of our own like perceiving first once we perceive it rightly then definitely we can work on it and we can create a personal own our own personal image so that is really important and these days uh, we are seeing that not only the social media but the impact which children getting from uh, their families or maybe uh, nearby areas yes. where they play or where they go to schooling they face these type of challenges related to their self image or maybe body shaming or something like that so the right approach you have mentioned how these children or parents can cater to and how they can help their child to become a better person or better version of Absolutely. themselves so that was really amazing and uh, look forward to hear more from you again so thank you so much ma'am for your time look forward and thank you so much for having me over looking forward to yet another read my story in a very positive way thank you and i will also share your social media link along with the interview so that people can be in touch with you, you take your help and guidance wherever they feel like so guys don't forget to check that out too and thank you so very much everyone for watching and listening i hope you all must have gathered a lot of information and enjoyed watching it don't forget to like share and subscribe have a good time thank you and bye bye